Everyone saw the trailer, right? Praise Jesus. <laughs> You're fake. You're phony. That right there was unkind and dismissive. I'm just gonna like set the whole thing on fire and live how I felt when I was born. You're black, just I a black. reminder. Okay, Then why would it? you say something like that? I mean, if you're godlike, because now you want to go there, okay, let's go there. <laughs> you're going to go with Mary, who <laughs> her grandfather? Mary married her step-grandfather. Her grandfather. Mm -hmm. So yeah. would you like me to break that down for you? I'm in Salt Lake City with the newest housewives. I am so excited to see you all in person. The first episode blew my mind and I had no idea that Salt Lake City was so glamorous. <laughs> Surprise. But there is also Darby, an elite social circle. This is Hollywood, honey. Fueled by beauty, wealth, and perfection. Surprise, <laughs> you're fabulous. Tell us more. So let's begin at the beginning. You find out through people, whatever, that they're going to make a Housewives in Salt Lake. How do you get involved? It well, all kind of happened from stopped, Lisa. Yeah, yeah, it started with me. Um, I do so much with the Sundance Film Festival, and I had a lot of good friends that work in production, and I was introduced through a mutual friend to the production company. I was literally getting a blowout when the call came in, and I was like on one, and we had the best conversation. It lasted over an hour and a half, and they're like, we have to do something in Salt Lake. And so I was like, cool, what are we gonna do? And it started, you know, thus like Real Housewives of Salt Lake. I hold myself to a high standard. If you don't want the same standards, go away. How did like the cast come together? You know, I think it was like a lot of friend of a friend. So I knew Heather, so I connected Heather with the team yep. and then Meredith and then through mutual friends, we got Jen. Yeah. Which this we one. can't she live without switch. Jen. It's because she's Mormon 2.0. Oh, whatever. She's Mormon bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> you did switch with Jen. I told her we were doing a show yes. about business women. No, you did not. Yes, she did. Yes. Well, I didn't, we didn't know it was Housewives, to be fair. Okay. We didn't even think it was. Really? Well, you um, did. We kind of did. did I? Yeah. We knew it was I mean, Housewives. That was a little, I, I really <laughs> thought it was going to be like a Southern Charm type like okay. thing. And I Jen. just said it's a, a show about business women in Utah. Successful I really think you'd business be great. women in Utah. And I was like, Okay, you got me. Yeah. <laughs> now I have to represent the minority yeah, demographic. Like, we, need, we need the Polynesian yeah. community behind this. So. Yeah, and they are behind it. But obviously there were meetings and they wanted to meet you and get to know your personality. What was that process like? It was so simple. My name is Heather Gay. Lisa had told me about it, so when I got a call from a casting director, I wasn't even phased. I had heard about it from her, so we spoke for about 30, 40 minutes. He's like, can I do a Skype? interview with you today. And I'm like, yeah, let me shower, put on some makeup. He's like, try to look fancy. I sat down in a chair in my bedroom because I just didn't really think it would go anywhere. I just thought, you know, I was just like, you know, being a team player. And so we did it that day. And that was the last casting thing I did, really. Now, were any of you Housewife fans? Have you seen the show? Did you understand what it was? 100% Housewife fan. Okay, like Watched OGs? from the inception of OC. Okay, and who's your girl? Sonia Morgan. Yeah. Ooh, do you think you're alike? I love that. I just feel, I feel for Sonia. Like, uh -huh. I watched her whole thing, and yeah. like, she went through a divorce, and everyone was like, get over it. And I, you know, it's not the way the world works. It was hard for her. Mm -hmm. And so I just, I went on that journey with her, and so I feel, I love Sonia. Have you watched? So my assistant in New York, Crystal, she summarized every... She gave her the cliff notes? No, she, I was like, Crystal, look, here's what I need yeah. while I'm on this flight. So she summarized every every franchise. Yep. Here's who everybody is, gave me the quick summary. Yeah. It was so good, in fact, I think Michaeline asked me for a copy of it. Is there one housewife that you think you're like, like? I don't know that you're like anyone else no. I've ever met, so it's gonna be hard. I think if we picked a few different housewives from different franchises and then put them together, it yeah. would be the birth of Jen Shaw. Yes. Hey, the real Jen Shaw is here. I do like how, in the first episode, I saw that Jen Shaw is like a, it's a full name. Yeah, Jen people Shaw. think that's my name. Jen Shaw? Jen Shaw. Jen Shaw, but yeah, that's like She's my hyphenated. Home name. Really. And you had watched. Yeah, I had watched. I started with Beverly Hills. Um, love that, and I'm from New York, yeah. so obviously love New York. I actually like Jersey too. Um, I think it's cool. I mean, growing up back east, you can't help but not yeah. love. I mean, you see a little bit of everyone you know on those shows. And I know you have like businesses and things. So are you like a Bethany? Or are you a... Um, surprisingly, when we launched our tequila brand Vida in 2007, Bethany hosted the whole thing. 
It was like nuts. Like Bethany was drinking Vita for 10 days straight. So fun, so energetic, so amazing. And she's like, I don't even know if this is gonna get picked up. It ended up getting picked up. And you know, Bethany's done amazing things, but yeah, so I think I like, Love Bethany, I felt a little connection there because she was with us from the beginning. Cute. So yeah, love her. Have you spoken to any other housewives? I've been hanging out with Bronwyn a lot and Carrie Brittingham, just like we've connected and they were in Utah and they've been like really great actually. I love that. Kind of like housewife shaman, like yeah, guiding because... me through the process. What would you say the drama points are for the season? I mean, it's not housewives without some drama. You said it smells like hospital in here. Gin smells like hospital. No, you said it smells like hospital. Can you just be quiet? That hurt me. Are you done? And I'm yeah. pretty yeah. sure Mary M. Cosby, everyone saw the trailer, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's it. <laughs> Praise Jesus. <laughs> Praise Jesus. And who knew her? Like, how did she get in? So Mary came from one of my friends, Cameron, who's amazing. He's head of diversity for Utah, for like all of Silicon Slopes. And so he recommended Mary because he used to preach at her church. Got it. And so that's how we got Mary Cosby. Yeah. And Mary is the pot stirrer? No, no. Mm. No, no. Jen's Mary's the pot stirrer. No, I would not call Jen the pot stirrer either. I think Mary's the pot stirrer yeah. in her own like ambivalent How? way just because it's like hello <laughs> earth to mary <laughs> <laughs> this is what you said yesterday what's happened like right you know what yeah, i mean yeah you're right that's she's totally filter. unfiltered yeah she definitely she's gonna preach she can read the room we're gonna like, let her preach i went to lunch last week with heather i didn't know you guys had known each other or gone to school and knew each other for 20 years kind of i don't really remember her from school Whitney says that the um, biggest pot store it, are you two. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I don't You know cook, what's funny is I And I don't clean. Yeah, but I, can I don't stir pots. I got this ring. <laughs> <laughs> I don't stir pots. I think the kettle is calling all the pots black. Ooh. And I think she's the kettle and the pot. She's Ooh, super flexible though. Yes, yeah, very flexible. <laughs> One of the biggest shockers in housewife history is that Mary married her step-grandfather. Her grandfather. Mm -hmm. So yeah. would you like me to break that down for you? Please. Okay. You're gonna go with Mary, who <laughs> her grandfather? <laughs> so what that means is the grandmother was married to the same man that Mary's married to right now. But it's not her biological grandfather, but that's the grandfather she knew growing up. Growing up. Is, is it to keep like the money in the family? Like, I, I think, think that's Mary's story to tell. Yeah, that's like, okay. I wouldn't want to even reasons why yeah, it might have happened. Yeah, I I think Jen that's Mary's. Not. Yeah, to me. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I mean, let's hear Mary. I want to hear Mary's. I don't know if I've heard you? Mary's no, full I version of the yes. story. Like, I'd love to hear it from Mary. Okay. Yeah. And I've heard a little bit of Mary's story, and I I it's not that Cut and big dry. of a departure for me. Like, I understand the concept of faith over love. Yeah. I understand the concept of arranged marriages like right. it is not that far removed from my experience or right. my friends experiences or my ancestors experiences so I get it I get it shocking but I think there's a lot more depth there if like Mary gets to tell her story, story sometimes the headline <laughs> speaks you know it doesn't give like the essence of what's happening I mean, you're so I have good a on lot show to say the eyes. Right don't wave your finger and don't get ghetto just mm -hmm. how what, what Heather said like yeah. it wasn't it's such a, a shocker to her. When I first met Mary, um, my personal experience, I really thought I was gonna connect with Mary. Mm -hmm. She's a minority growing up in Salt Lake. I was like, oh, that's this is gonna be my girl. We're gonna bond. Mm -hmm. And so I went into it thinking that. She did tell me we went and had dinner and she said, look, you probably heard. I was like, no, I haven't heard. I, I, I had no idea. Mm -hmm. yeah. And she said, well, I'm married to um, my grandfather because my grandmother left, put it in the will that that's what she wanted to have happen. I literally was like, okay, girl, do your thing. Like it, 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 that wasn't, it wasn't like, oh my gosh, it wasn't until, you know, Mary and I had our own individual issues with each other about personal stuff mm -hmm. that, you but know. Jen just pulls that out of the hat. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, no, that's like, I mean, if you're godlike, cause now you want to go there. Okay, let's go there. Yeah. Let's go there. You want to go there? Okay. Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. Jesus. Pass the basket. Bless. Oh, hallelujah. Oh. Jen, who who pays for the parties 
when they're on the Housewives. You have to pay we do. for it? We do, yeah. No. Fabulous. Any hot buffets at Jen's and I'll have like sugar cookies and Sprite. <laughs> because we have different budget mentalities. No way. Yeah. Yeah, we, we cover all of the yeah. expenses. Yeah. Well, it's stuff we would normally be doing. Yeah, that's like Yeah, so that's like, yeah, anyway. these are our lives, so it's like stuff we'd normally be doing and then the cameras just come along. What's the most you've ever yeah. spent on a party at the chalet? <laughs> Probably 82,000. Jen, oh my god! Oh, look at this! Look at this. I flew in dancers from Tonga. She's got an exact number. Because, yeah. Because that's what it was. <laughs> yeah, because she's a detail person too. Because and, that's what it cost. And how many parties would you say on this sort of level do you plan a year? Mm, at least one every other month. There's a lot more during football season. Because Coach mm -hmm. Shaw's not yeah, there. Yeah, like he barbecues. So he doesn't like, really know. Like, oh, I was thinking about when he had the football players over there, She entertains yeah. the football players. No, they're so all over. Yeah. an annual football team. And then when Shaw goes out of town, we have like a girl No, party. then it's like yeah. I'm hosting all everything because Coach Shaw's Then it's Coach sleepover. Shaw's yeah. Does he, he doesn't know? ask questions. Mm. He Does knows. he need to know? I Does mean, he need to know? I'm like, hey, the girls are coming over, and that pretty much means. It means a $50,000 dinner party. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that means transforming the house. I guess in my closed, small mind of never being here before, I didn't realize how glamorous, how fashion forward, how fabulous the ladies of Salt Lake City were. So what do you mm -hmm. think the misconceptions about Salt Lake City are? Oh my gosh, the list can go on and on. I think first of all that you have to have um, a club license to go out to drink. I think people are shocked that we have liquor here. We have a lot of liquor here. <laughs> that girls are going to dress totally differently. Like almost like pilgrim -y yes. or not very cute. That we don't have good food here. We have the most amazing food here. We have like everything you would want here. What do you think the biggest misconceptions about Salt Lake? That everybody's Mormon. A quick lesson on how to be a good Mormon. Don't drink, don't swear, treat your body like a temple. Whenever I'm traveling and people find out I'm from Utah, that's the first question I get. Are you Mormon? So I think that's the biggest I misconception. I get that a lot. But guess what, do I not everybody is Mormon. Mormon. <laughs> Well, they just aren't living it. I mean, every there's a trace of Mormonism in almost everyone that's like native to Salt Lake. It's very rare. Yeah, that's well, the truth. There are devout Mormons and there are Mormons that have fallen away, and it's a very big divide. I don't. I think to me, it's so different than that. I just feel like I'm LDS, and I just do it my way. I think people confuse the culture with the religion, but literally, like church is an option. You can choose to go to church or not. I think that. There's so many more people like me in the middle that like choose to live it. Yeah. And then, but their own way. Because I, I own tequila brands and I'm Mormon, so that's kind of not the norm. And I can sense from you and from the show that you're a little bit more still upset about the divide. Yeah, I've had a completely different experience mm -hmm. than Lisa. Like there's just, like I feel like attendance is compulsory <laughs> at church. Like yeah. you're, like it's a very behavior based religion. So as much as I would love to just like have one foot in the Mormon door and you know and live my life as I feel to live it, yeah. it just doesn't work for me. There's too many issues that are absolutely incongruent with how I believe and how I want to live. And And so you had to walk away completely. I'm walking away in the show. This, <laughs> this is, is it. the process. We're seeing it. I'm lighting my entire mm -hmm. life on fire and it is hard. It is so hard to be a good Mormon. I don't know what's wrong with me, like I'm kind of embarrassed by my smallness, but um, I was assuming that people that were in Salt Lake City and part of the Mormon church were not like getting filler. No, everybody here wants to look good. Like That's your largest demographic. Yeah, my largest demographic are Mormon yeah. moms. Yes. That's what I'm saying. Mormon, Mormon moms. girls getting married and Mormon moms maintaining it. I think people take a lot of pride in how they look. Yeah. Maybe a little more on the inside we could work for, but like. Well, this is good for business, They look good on the outside, great for business. yeah. yeah. Great right? for no complaints. What is the most popular treatment? We lead with lips at Beauty Lab, like yeah. lip injections are our number one, and then Botox. Yeah. But you know, everything, laser hair removal, cheek injections, chin injections, Botox anywhere, in your armpits so you don't sweat, in so, your palms so yeah. you don't sweat, like, yeah. you know. In your knees. In your knees, so your knees don't sweat. You know, oh, if you're here, you can have a sweaty knee in a Gucci pantsuit. Yeah, no, Heather. it's truth. It's Gucci. I mean, yeah, I was like, don't sweat in it. Yeah, not in the Gucci. Water. So, like, we're Botoxing anything that sweats. Yeah. 
and we're filling anything that's shriveling. Yeah. And we're doing whatever people want. You know, and like are, we're not dictating what beauty is. They get to choose for themselves. Are these women telling the husbands? Does everybody, yeah. everyone, everyone's oh, yeah. in on it? Oh, no. Everyone's I, no, in. I don't think no so. No one's telling the husbands. My husband goes with me. <laughs> well, John is evolved. John, 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 you're married. Yeah. John, 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 John is works. amazing. John, your forehead looks great, babe. <laughs> <laughs> no wrinkles at all, honey. You need no, Botox in your knees? John, How's your hair She has a unique experience. Yeah. You have a unique experience. You know, I feel like, you know, I'm lucky. I got a good husband, and you know, honestly, like I you feel did for get a Heather. Really good husband. I feel so much for Heather, but like everyone has such a different experience, yeah, and course. no one can discount it. And I also think one thing too: Heather gave up time of her life yes. to serve an LDS mission. And when you give up something like that deep and are so committed, you're gonna have a different reaction sure. than me, who like. Right. Just and cares I didn't about go on me. A just kidding. Like I didn't choose to be Mormon. I would never have chosen to be Mormon, but I was yeah. born into it mm -hmm. and I wanted to like yeah, you know, do it right. I didn't have a choice either. It was like you were born. We were born into no, it. No, and it, it, there was no question. It wasn't And for me it was an a option. choice. So I decided to do yeah. everything possible you ran, I could. Yeah, you ran far and fast I'm from it. I'm going to marry a black man. I'm going to come to Islam. Yeah. yeah. Totally, yeah. I'm going to send my kids to Catholic private school. I mean, mm -hmm. hey, if there's some if, if you, we can throw some diversity at it, I'm, I'm, I'm the one. <laughs> yeah, no, it's true. And I'm kind of like, listen, it didn't work out for me, and there's no way for me to make it work out, so I'm just going to like set the whole thing on fire yeah. and live how I felt when I was born. <laughs> <laughs> Good Mormon gone bad. Yeah. It's like a Rihanna song. It was, if she'd write the song, I would be in the video. Just in the background, the you know, just like, you know what I mean? Just, uh, uh, uh. <laughs> what does that mean to you? Because I don't think you've gone bad. Like you've I've gone bad. You have? Yeah. <laughs> I've gone bad. Me being on this show is a Mormon gone bad, honestly. Mm -hmm. Like, there's no question about it. Like, it, yeah, I'm a good Mormon and I've gone bad and I want to just probably just not be even a bad Mormon. I just want to like be Heather gay and not anything. But that's a huge, horribly painful process that I'm working through. Is it a relief in some ways that a whole new side of the whole world is going to get to know you? It's a complete gift. Like the fact that this came in my life, like I don't think it would have happened any other way. Like mm -hmm. it had to be like crack it wide open, mm -hmm. like blaze a trail, set it on fire and just let the chips fall where they may. And I don't think I would have done it otherwise. And you joked in your casting video that you could barely talk because you had so much Botox yeah. in your chin. I just recently I had them put some Botox in my chin. I wish I could smile, but I can't. I just, oh. Yeah, that's it was a reality. I didn't, I mean, I did the interview. I wasn't thinking it would go anywhere, so I didn't really care. I'm just, I would have to hold my chin sometimes to enunciate. But now I'm more careful. But it, to keep from like the yeah. scrunchy chin. Yeah, like, can you, you guys do scrunchy scr chin? Well, how much pressure? Like barely. Yeah. I have a scrunchy chin, I think. I like, like Botox. It's called the orange peel chin. I don't know. How do I have it? No. How do you think the show will be received once it premieres? I think it's going to be amazing. I think so many people are going to relate to all of us in different ways. I think there's something for everyone. Mm -hmm. I, I think people will be surprised, yeah. don't you? I think, they're gonna yeah. I think I'm going to get tarred and feathered. So I'm prepared for <laughs> no, it. No, I don't think so. <laughs> I already said filming. I was like, I'm super up. <laughs> so like, are we allowed people to say are gonna, that? Oh, okay. can we say that? Yeah. We well, can. That's your favorite <laughs> word. Yeah, it's my favorite word. Yeah, I mean, I think you have, have to, to go into it knowing that. that you gotta go all in or not do it. Yeah. And I think you ladies went all in. I think we all went all in. All There's of no us. question. Yeah, 100%. No one held that. This is the interview before your lives change in such a major way. And I wanted to ask you each, before the world gets to decide what they think of you, what do you hope that the viewers take away from you and your story? You know, the thing that I um, like really want is for people to feel like they can do anything. Like I feel like everyone should just be 100% themselves and whatever you choose to do, be committed with it and do it. And that's the whole reason when we started even going down this road, I wanted to be on the show is because I really hope people feel like they're not afraid and they take a chance. Like no matter what it is in their life, it doesn't have to be with business, anything, just take the plunge, go and then just go all in and do it. Yeah. Jen, what do you hope people take away from you? I think, I hope, I, my story is, you know, obviously different from the other ladies. Yeah. It was growing up in Utah as a minority and being a female and in business, mm -hmm. it was really, really hard. It was really tough for me, um, you know, and just everything I had to go through. So for me, I hope that I can be, you know, an example to other women, minority women, where they have somebody to look up to, because when I was growing up, I wish I did, where I was like, she, she looks like me, I can do this, mm -hmm. you know, no matter how hard it gets, because it does get very difficult, and there was so many times when I wanted to quit, but 
just um, I hope that you know I can I can be a motivation to other women of color. I don't want to represent anything, but I just want to like be open and like let people know that like you know you can be in pain and still do good things. I don't Aww. know, like you can still you know have a life. Well, I think it's really brave, and then I think this will be uh, both traumatic and uh, a big learning lesson, you know? And now you're gonna have like all kinds of millions of friends from around the world watching you. <laughs> millions so. of men, bring me all the men. <laughs> are, are you ready to like get back yeah. in the saddle? I've never really dated or done anything in front of my kids. I've never drank or dated in front of my kids or done anything, but this, throughout the course of the season, like I kind of come into my own and start like, start like cracking open like a new life for myself. What kind of guy are you looking for? Any guy that likes me. That's no, just, no, uh-uh, uh bar too low, bar too low. I know, bar but like, low. I mean, I just, I don't know. I just, I don't even know. Cause I got married like young, yeah. virgin, ready to this, you know, be a wife for the rest of my life. Those are all really lovely things about each of you. Now, what's your worst trait? I did learn that I talk a lot and John is an amazing listener and production pointed out that John has much more amazing things to say than me and to let him speak more. I've learned like really listen more to John. Okay. And I've learned a lot more from John. John's genius. John, can you just come in and wave <laughs> yeah. to the camera? John's John, amazing. John, John. John dresses John. John is this so is cute. John. John. No, come into the light, we love John. John. Come and, you know, give her I'm a little lucky. kiss on the cheek. Aww. 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 And I'm cute, lucky John. because I got two gorgeous boys from him too that are just as amazing. Aww. So, Ooh, so tall. yeah. Okay, Jen, what's your worst thing? What's your worst character flaw? <laughs> what's my worst? Well, I mean, I, I mean, okay. How much time do we have? No, my worst character flaw, like, gets. I didn't know it was a flaw. <laughs> I still don't acknowledge it as a flaw, but I've been told Until it's a flaw. I started filming, but I think, I don't know, for me, it's, uh, I think I go like zero to 100 because I'm very passionate and so I need to realize like other people don't quite understand that passion mm -hmm. and it, it, yeah, it works well with Lisa, mm -hmm. but like some people it doesn't, and so that's something I needed to. I expected people to just know, I'm going to tell you to f off, and then I love you. you it's fine. Your culture too, mm. like I think a lot you know, of it is Jen's culture. Yeah, I just, you know, I'm, I'm Polynesian. We do everything big. I'm very passionate. I'm loud, and you know, me and my sister might get in like a physical fist fight, but then I'm like, I'm let's good. go shopping. I love you. Let's go shopping. <laughs> No, but like I love just as hard and I, I need, that was, you know, for me, I needed to um, understand that. And also, I mean, dealing with the loss of my dad made yeah. me act out in like ways that I didn't, I thought mm. they were, I didn't think that they existed, but then going through like the therapy and everything mm -hmm. realized like, okay, this is, maybe I'm not as perfect. As she I is amazing. Just and I would say the bigger the heart, the bigger the emotion. And that's mm. what you get with Jen. Heather. Yeah, yeah, like I think maybe jokes. using humor at any time instead of standing up for myself. Mm -hmm. Good one. So I'm just trying to like figure out but that you can still, <laughs> you don't have to go along to get along all the time. You can just really like put your foot down and have some personal boundaries. That's like something I'm learning. I yeah. love this. Well, I am, I'm so excited about this season. I'm so, I feel like so blessed that I got to come to Utah and hang out with you. Oh, I feel more, blessed. hashtag Utah blessed. <laughs>